you know, with all these superhero movies around, we should always take a look back at the movies that came before, because there was a time when superhero movies were not popular. Hey everybody, this is David, and today I'm going to be taking a look back at the many different shows and movies that help contribute to these, you know, the popularity of these characters today. And uh, I thought it would be a fun down memory lane, I guess you can say. So, uh, yeah, I'll be talking about superheroes, movies, and a little bit about the TV show stuff. The movies, specifically the movies and shows that really helped cemented and helped change the way superhero movies are today, you know, we, because there are certain films and shows that helped evolve and and help the 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 brand i guess you could say uh be what they are and i'll be telling you which of those films that i feel and i've heard other people say they feel that those are the films and shows that would help mold the superhero genre so so of course we got to start with the comic books the very first superhero people would say is superman which Debut, made his debut in April 18, 1938, Action Comics number one. And yep, Superman, the first superhero ever created, and followed by Batman, who came out in 1939. But where was the first superhero, you know, media? Where was, where did they start in the media? There were a couple of short films or they, they were movie serials at the time, I guess. There were animated shorts of Superman, but there were also the Kirk Allen movie serials. And then after those, they did do one movie with George Reeves, but that was like, um, I think it was only an hour film. It was kind of like a pilot, I guess I would say, if I had to describe it for the George Reeves television series, which debuted in the 1950s. I believe it was 1951. The George Reeves television series debuted and it started off in black and white and then it would turn into color later and it was a very popular show at the time I mean when George Reeves uh, that that incident with George Reeves happened where he, people don't know whether he was murdered or he suicide you know he went suicide um, you know a lot of kids apparently were really traumatized by that event for those of you that don't know about the George Reeves incident there's a really good movie about it called Hollywood Land, funny enough, starring Ben Affleck, who plays George Reeves. And yes, Ben Affleck is in the Superman suit and everything. So it's kind of funny that, you know, George um, Ben Affleck wore the Superman costume, and now he's going to be playing Batman, fighting Superman in Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. So check out Hollywood Land. It's a, it's a really good movie. Obviously, as time went on, we also got the Batman 1966 series starring Adam West and Burt Ward. This was a little bit more comedic. But even at the time, you could see how how people were viewing superheroes at the time. It's clearly, at this point in time, they weren't taken as seriously uh, back then. Even the George Reeves series was aimed more towards children. And so was this series. Even though this series kind of had... Uh, comedic there was a comedicness where you know the, from what I understood kids took the show seriously where the adults would get the humor and appreciate it on that level so I thought hearing that was was very smart that, that was the intention of the show and that's how it worked we also got the Wonder Woman the Linda Carter Wonder Woman series in 1975 was which was again taking uh, some inspiration from the 1966 Batman, where it was a little, still campy. It was really until 1978's Superman the Movie, where, starring Christopher Reeve, that's the one where these superhero films were being treated more seriously. Yes, it was a little campy at times, but they, they treated the source material with a little bit more respect. If you really watch the first and second act of Superman the movie where you know the Krypton stuff and the the stuff on Smallville a lot of that stuff is treated pretty seriously there's some dramatic moments in a lot of those scenes there's some dramatic moments towards the end too but for the most part it's mostly campy around the the Smallville stuff and the 
the the metropolis stuff but, and that's what you know gene hackman was there for to lighten up the mood as well you know his his lex luther if you compare him to someone like you know heath ledger's joker or even michael rosenbaum's lex luther from smallville they're very different characters they're, the the villains today are much more uh grounded and real while the gene hackman version while he was great for his time was a lot more campier still you were great in your day, Superman. But it just stands to reason. When it came time to cash in your chips, this old diseased maniac would be your banker. It wasn't until 1989's Tim Burton Batman film. That's when things started changing. Things started getting a little bit more darker because Tim Burton took inspiration from Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns. That's when, in comic books in the early 1980s, when, uh, you know, comics were starting to take a darker, more dull turn uh, to themselves. And the the idea of the 1989 Batman film was that it was going to take inspiration from that and make... It was going to be the first superhero movie that, you know started taking darker and there were a lot of shows at the time and other movies that tried to capture what uh the tim burton movies were doing but they failed at it you know not a lot of them were succeeding uh, a lot of people would say the 1990 uh teenage mutant ninja turtles uh you know they got the right tone for themselves too there but uh yeah batman nothing was as big as the 1989 batman movie at the time that was like some people even consider it the first big blockbuster in hollywood and that's what started the trend of like releasing all these blockbusters every summer oh. Oh. you killed my parents what huh. <laughs> what are you talking about i made you you made me first Hey, bad brain. I mean, I was a kid when I killed your parents. I mean, I say I made you. You gotta say you made me. And how childish can you get? Huh? You wouldn't get a guy with glasses on, huh? would you? Huh? Obviously, by that time, also we had Batman the animated series, which was kind of influenced by the the Tim Burton Batman franchise. The but um, a lot of people I've noticed will say that they think Batman the Animated Series is actually even bad, better than the Tim Burton movies. So I I don't know. I've seen some people say that some you know, and I can see why. I mean, their 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 stories are really grounded too. And even though the sh the show was aimed towards kids, there's a lot of adult themes there that like might surprise people. The show had gone on to spin off many other shows such as Superman the Animated Series, Batman Beyond, and Justice League Unlimited. Also at the time, superhero shows, it seemed like Superman was the only one that was really having success on the small screen because uh, they had a four season show of Superboy, which uh, yeah lasted four seasons, but was only canceled because the creators lost the rights to the, to the Superman character and Warner Brothers created Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman, starring Dean Cain and Terry Hatcher, which lasted for four seasons. By the fourth season, though, it started lo losing ratings, and uh, that's that. By the end of the 90s, superhero movies were already dying. We had just gotten Batman Forever in 1995, starring Jim Carrey, Val Kilmer, Chris O'Donnell, Tommy Lee Jones, and Nicole Kidman. But it was really 1997 that saw the death of superhero movies. And that was with Batman and Robin, starring George Clooney, Alicia Silverstone, and Chris O'Donnell, as well as Arnold Schwarzenegger and Uma Thurman. And uh, we also got Steel with Shaquille O'Neal. And yeah, this was a dark time, a lot of superhero fans would say, comic book fans or superhero fans in general even though there were still some superhero comic a lot of them were failing miserably you know i think men in black was a success but i don't think a lot of people knew that was based off a comic book uh a lot of people will say blade you know will bring up blade as oh yeah but that, that came the year after in 1998 yeah but a lot of people really didn't know that that was a superhero movie at the time so 
the movie that really started bringing an interest back for superheroes was actually the first X-Men movie. The first X-Men movie actually brought that glimmer of hope that, hey, maybe these movies are still profitable. And Hollywood started paying attention again. And if it wasn't for X-Men, Marvel at the time I remember was going bankrupt. So if X-Men had failed, there is an interview, I think, think with Kevin Feige where he even says if X-Men failed, Spider-Man would have not been made. And uh, that's a scary thought to think about. Like, think about it. If X-Men had crashed, that would probably be it for Marvel. We wouldn't have the Avengers today if it wasn't for the first X-Men movie. Also with the first X-Men movie, you can see that there's a lot of influence of the movies that followed that kind of t took that feel of a more grounded world, you know? Brian Singer really set that tone in his first X-Men movie and really succeeded at that. There are mutants out there with incredible powers, Logan, and many who do not share my respect for mankind. If no one is equipped to oppose them, humanity's days could be over. In 2001, we were getting Smallville. Smallville was going to be that show that if you watch other superhero TV shows today, you can see that there, there's a little bit of inspiration from Smallville in there. Like, there's, aside from the teen drama, take that away, it's also the superhero drama aspect of the show and how a show can go on. Because by season 8, 9, and 10, Smallville had started introducing this whole, not just a Superman universe, because at that time, you know, superhero TV shows and movies all were all self-contained. They didn't have other heroes joining, you know, the universe. That was only for the animated stuff. By this, by, by season four, actually, of Smallville is where they started introducing other DC characters. That's where The Flash came in. The second, the season five would have Aquaman and Cyborg come in. And then season six would have Green Lantern, who would be forming the Justice League. And that was the first time the Justice League, a team that people always wanted to see, was on a live action show or any live action medium. As superhero television was getting a little bit better, superhero movies were getting even more better. We Because by 2002, we got the first Spider-Man movie, which grossed... A lot of money at the time spider-man was the highest grossing film a uh, superhero film sorry ever made and uh, that was that was a huge accomplishment at this time and that really you know turned that really started the craze if spider-man wasn't a huge success I don't think we would see the craze that fast yet but because it was right after that we got movie like three sometimes four movies of uh, superheroes a year and that was really insane. Obviously X-Men 2 which came out the year after and Spider-Man 2 which came out the year after that, you know, they were also huge successes not just with money but also critically. A lot of critics were loving X-Men 2 and Spider-Man 2 and that was when superhero sequels were, you know, say, people were saying, "Wow, this is actually better than the original." X-Men 2 and Spider-Man 2 are one of those films that people hold even higher than the original which is amazing at the time. No one thought that was even possible because Batman Returns, it was okay, but it wasn't that great. Then you got Superman 2, which was, yeah, Superman 2 maybe a little bit. A lot of people like the Donner cut of that version more. But yeah, X-Men 2 and, and Spider-Man 2 really showed people that, wow, we now after you do the origin, you can really go all, all out with it. In 2005, though, things really changed with Batman Begins, Christopher Nolan starting his Dark Knight trilogy. You know, this was, again, I, I can say so much about the Dark Knight trilogy being my all-time favorite trilogies of all time. But again, if you look back at the original X-Men movie, you can see Nolan kind of took that t kind of grounded tone and may put it into Batman Begins. He just made it even better. So... Batman Begins didn't really change the landscape, but it did improve on it. What about Escalation? Escalation. If we start carrying semi-automatics, they buy automatics. We start wearing Kevlar. They buy armor-piercing rounds. Yeah. And you're wearing a mask. Jumping off rooftops. 
In 2008, not only did we get a, the sequel to Batman Begins, which was The Dark Knight, and the very first superhero movie to get recognition at the Academy Awards thanks to Heath Ledger's performance. But I know the truth. There's no going back. You've changed things. Forever. And why do you want to kill me? <laughs> I don't, don't want to kill you. What would I do without you? Go back to ripping off mob dealers? No, no. No. No, you. You complete me. But we also got the first Iron Man movie, which was the beginning of a whole new era of ideas and where the superhero genre can go. And what do I mean by that? Marvel, unlike any other studio, was going to accomplish something that no other studio had ever tried before. Start to connect their films together to create a whole universe of films. So starting with Iron Man, we had also gotten The Incredible Hulk that year, which in my opinion was the much better Hulk movie. Then we also got Iron Man 2 in 2010. In 2011, we got Thor and Captain America, the first Avenger, all leading up to 2012's The Avengers, one of the most successful films of all time, and right now even beating all the Spider-Man movies as the fourth highest grossing film of all time worldwide. I mean, that is a huge accomplishment. Yeah, it got beaten by Jurassic World recently, but you know what? The fact that it's in the top five movies worldwide of all time right now, that's still a huge accomplishment because not a lot of movies have made it up there in recent years. So, bravo, guys. You almost beat Titanic and Avatar, but we're still fighting to, to get there. The world doesn't want to cooperate and try to get those other two out of there. Also in 2012, Christopher Nolan was closing the doors on his Dark Knight trilogy with The Dark Knight Rises. So this led people to believe, like, where was DC going to go? Because Green Lantern, which had come out the year before in 2011, had failed in the box office. And that was supposed to be DC's attempt at creating their own cinematic universe. Because they got wind that that's what they got the idea that Marvel was doing that. So they wanted to create their own cinematic universe too, starting with Green Lantern. So Green Lantern was going to be their Iron Man, and that fell flat on their faces. So, so what were they going to do? Well, not to fret, DC, despite not doing so great on the big screen, was having actually a lot of success on the small screen with, after the success of Smallville lasting 10 seasons, they had started Arrow in 2012 which was a good success, which was a great start with good reviews. And uh, it's still on the air today. Season 3 was a little on the weak side, but, you know, we can forgive them for one season slipping up a little bit here and there. The Flash, on the other hand, which is the sister series to Arrow, has been huge right now and a great uh, launching point for the CW, their highest rated show right now. You need to calm down. And you need to hold on. I just hope they can turn Barry back before he kills Oliver. Me? I'll be more worried about what Oliver might have to do to Barry. Barry has superpowers. Oliver has a bow and arrow. Do you have any idea how many people Oliver has killed with that bow and arrow? Recurve bow arrows can travel up to 300 feet per second, so like 200 miles an hour, Barry can run three times that fast. Whatever. Oliver's been doing this a lot longer. My money's on experience. My money's on speed. Please tell me you're not actually having this conversation right now. And uh, it's also launching all these other shows, such as Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Agent Carter, and Netflix's Daredevil series, another high-breaking uh, series on Netflix. So back on the big screen, we got Man of Steel now, the newest DC film to start this whole new cinematic universe. And Man of Steel, 
Even though it wasn't a critical success, it was a financial success and a good launching point for DC to continue their films. I was bred to be a warrior, Cap. Trained my entire life to master my senses. Where did you train? On a farm? So with all that being said guys, it looks like these are kind of the films that are forming the way we're looking at superhero films going down the future, you know? And we got some great movies last year such as Captain America the Winter Soldier, Guardians of the Galaxy, and X-Men Days of Future Past. This year we just got Avengers Age of Ultron, Ant-Man, and there's still so many more to come guys. I mean. With the success that Marvel's been having with their Marvel Cinematic Universe, and we also got Batman v Superman coming out next year, as well as Suicide Squad, Captain America Civil War, that's going to be the movie that's going to introduce Spider-Man to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And even on television, we got, you know, Daredevil Season 2 is coming and The Punisher is going to be in that one, as well as... Legends of Tomorrow, which I'm totally excited for because it's part of the Arrow and Flash universe. So that that trailer looks really cool. What you're up against is bigger than all of us, which is why it's going to take all of you. His name is Vandal Savage. And he's been alive thousands of years. He is immortal and commands the most powerful army the world has ever seen. And what makes you think we could stop him? Because one day, you do. Rip Hunter. I'm from East London. Oh, and the future. I'm a member of the Time Masters, an organization charged with protecting history itself. And in the future, as unlikely as it may seem, you people become a team. There's a lot of really good things to look forward to at being a superhero fan and someone who has was that kid in school where you know superheroes weren't really cool and popular not a lot of people really talked about them but now today that they are cool and popular i'm really excited to see the future of superhero films and you know what i take advantage of this as long as you can because this won't be around forever it's pretty soon the popularity of superhero films will die down and we're going to have to accept that. It's going to be like the Westerns. There, were, there was at one point where Westerns were huge back in the day. And now they're no longer that great. You know, not a lot of people go running out to see Westerns anymore. And one day, superhero films might be the same way. Maybe not. I hope, I hope superhero films prove them wrong. Because unlike Westerns, superhero films can be different things. So I think there's a lot more for them to expand. And yes, once in a while we're going to get a, you know, a crappy superhero film, unfortunately. But so far it seems like there's been a lot of better ones, good ones, than there have been bad ones. So with that being said, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. I know this is a long video, but it's been worth it. I, I wanted to talk about all this. And uh, until next time, guys, go watch superhero films and uh, take care.